Welcome back to the Diabetic Diet Show. Welcome to the show, everyone. Today, it's show number 188. This is going to be turkey, potatoes, and apples. The ingredients for this is going to be a box of stovetop stuffing. One package of ground turkey. I'm going to use half for the first part of my recipe and I'll use the other half for another part. So I'm going to need salt and pepper, half a stick of butter, I'm going to use two stalks of celery, and onions. I've pre-cut some stuff up, it makes it a little bit faster. One small apple, and you have to remove the core. I have a coring tool, if not you'll just want to cut it up to remove it. And then you have to chop it up fairly fine. We're going to use parsley, about a palmful of the dried spice. We're going to use uh, thyme and an egg and chicken broth or beef broth is okay to use. Potatoes. I would use two potatoes per person. I like the Yukon Gold. It's better. And then balsamic vinegar of some sort. This I order online. I get this from Grapes and Olives. This particular one is pecan balsamic vinegar and it's real good. Now I don't work for them. I don't get paid or anything to say that. I just order online and I like it. And my olive oil comes from there too. So today for the olive oil I'm going to use garlic mushroom olive oil. And you can use any kind that you want. So I have that as well. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the water boiling because that takes the longest. So let's go ahead and put this in to my pasta strainer that I got and I just love. Turn this on. That's going. Now let's start cutting some things up here. So we need to cut up our potatoes. They tend to boil faster when you cut them up. So I have my mandolin here and you can use a knife or you can use a mandolin if you want. This thing's pretty neat. I don't think it was very expensive. Another thing I ordered online. Everything I have I think I ordered online. Just like that. See that how fast that cuts those little rascals? Protects your hands. Bigger potato takes a couple of minutes to get started, but once you get it, you got it. There we go. Put that little play toy aside. Pretty fast. Put them in there, get them boiling. The apple I'm going to wait and do later because they tend to brown up. As far as the egg goes, I can crack the egg. You're best to crack an egg on a flat spot like this and then you can pull it open and you won't get shells in it just like that. I have the oven preheating to 325. I need to make my stuffing. Now you can make this from scratch with bread or you can be like the rest of us and use the stovetop stuffing. However, in place of water, I'm using a beef broth. You could also use a chicken broth. 
I don't think they make a turkey broth, so and I'm doing turkey, so let's go ahead and put that in there and get that going. Now you also have to put in butter. So you need a half a stick of butter. There that goes. Let that come to a boil. When it comes to the boil, put in your box of stuffing, take it off the burner, stir it, let it sit. Now let's start on the next leg of our journey. That's going to be onions, celery, and our ingredients here. So let's go ahead and start with some oil. So olive oil. I did three turns. Of course, you can find all the ingredients and the quantities of what I use and how I do with my website. That's going to be uh, James tdds.blogspot.com and down there in the lower right hand corner you'll see the subscribe button if you hit that now then you'll get to see some of my other videos and if you hit the bell button it'll remind you when I drop a new video so I have my olive oil now I've cut up some onions in advance which really is a time saver I'm just going to do about a handful of them I don't want to do too many and then I have some celery here. Throw in some celery. Put in my egg. Now my apple. Get some room here. For my apple, I'm using this fancy coring machine. Just pop some out like that. Then I give it a spin, the core comes out. Then I just take my knife and I just put them into about quarter inch pieces. Just like that. and slow. There we go. And my scraper. Now we need to do our dry ingredients. So this is the time. I'm going to put some of this in. Parsley. I was wondering why it wasn't coming out of there on the wrong side. Sage. Sage is good. You can have a lot of sage. Sage is pretty mild. It's not like salt. You gotta be careful with your salt. Pepper, you don't have to worry about pepper either. That's not a strong one. Salt. This is it. This is the one I gotta be careful with. And when you have potatoes, you always use more salt than you would on something else. Butter, you can put in quarter to half a stick of butter. Now I am going to switch here. This is boiling. Get that melting the butter and put the lid on it. It'll make it heat faster. I need to put the stuffing in, so let's go ahead and put in the stuffing and we'll move some things out of the way here just to make some room.
I have my pumpkins because this is good for the holiday season. This could be good for Thanksgiving or this could be good for the middle of July for a meal. We dump that in like that. Lots of times I use a pasta noodle tool. This works pretty good because it's heavy. Just like that. That's looking real good. I'm going to go ahead and cut up some more celery. I'm going to need it for two things. One is I like to put it on top when I'm all done as a garnish. And the other is I try to keep ahead on celery in this little container. But I'm also going to make a potato hors d'oeuvre. And it's going to be a real simple one. All I'm going to do is take a potato that I boiled at the same time while I made the other parts that I needed for this recipe. I'm going to cut them in half. With a spoon, I'm going to scrape the center out of them and mix it together and refill it. Celery is one of those things that's kind of hard to cut up. It wants to go everywhere on you. Okay, now we have this going. I need to put more stuff in here. So this has been cooking for a few minutes. Let's go ahead and put in our stuffing. And our potatoes are ready to go in. Just like that. Shake this up, put it back on the burner. Move a few things out of the way here. Make sure she's not hot. Go. Bring it back to where I can reach it. I'm rolling this together, folding it. Now the turkey, I pre-cooked. Checked it with the thermometer to make sure that it was over 170. I have it all pre-cooked. I'm just going to put it in the center like that. 
then I'm going to break it up. I have the ingredients cooking pretty well here. It's looking pretty good. Now, turkey is a little stiff, so in order to break it up, you need a tool of some sort that does this. I happen to have this fancy little thing. I ordered somewhere sometime, and it works perfect for this. You're just going to chop up your cooked turkey just like this. Works great. It's got teeth on it. Probably could use a putty knife or a sawzall. We need to put in a couple of tablespoons of our balsamic vinegar. I have the measuring tool hiding here. A little extra for good luck because I really like it. I just need to stir this. Now, this is almost done. If you don't pre-cook the sausage like I did or you don't cook the potatoes separate like I did you would have to put this back in the oven now at 325 for about 20 minutes and then you'd have to check your turkey to make sure that you know it's 170 or so make sure it's cooked turkey and chicken it's kind of bad if it's not cooked. This is looking really well. Let's let this cool for a couple of minutes. Let's go ahead and plate things up now. It's looking delicious. Just like that. And then I like to put a little bit of celery on top. I like the crunch. And there you go. Well, that's the show for today. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye for now.